Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. Today is a follow-on to my tutorial entitled Linux Devices. Today I want to discuss Linux disk drives. So Windows users and new Linux users are usually not aware of the steps to configure a new disk drive. Most disk drives are configured with globally unique identifier formatted partition tables, otherwise known as GUID partition tables, and they're required for booting via the UEFI partition. So GUID and UEFI are a replacement for the older FAT partition tables, which booted via a master boot record. FAT and MBR are largely obsolete today because they use 32 bits for logical block addressing with traditional 512 byte sectors. In theory, a GUID partition could be as large as 18 exabytes, whereas the largest FAT32 partition can only be 2 terabytes. So what are the steps to configure and mount a drive in Linux? Well, Windows mostly hides the configuration of a drive to make it easier for the end user. In my Linux devices video, we learned about block-oriented storage. So the steps to configure a drive in Linux are, first of all, we locate the drives and partitions with the command lsblk. Then we use parted to create a partition table. Then we use parted to actually create the partition that we want. And then we create a mount point folder and we use BLK ID or block ID to find the UUID of the partition that you want to mount. And we edit the slash Etsy slash FS tab, otherwise known as the file table, to mount the partition in the mount point at boot time. So let's go configure a partition on a new disk drive and mount it. So here we are at a terminal, and this happens to be a terminal on a test machine, but we're gonna do everything from the CLI today anyway. First command I wanna issue is an LSBLK to list all my block-oriented storage devices. You can see here that I have quite a few loop devices and all of those loop devices are virtual mounts. In this particular case, those virtual mounts are for snap packages that are installed on the system. Next thing you see here is SR0, and that is a CD slash DVD ROM. And then we have device VDA. Your devices might be named something different like SDA or whatever, but there are a lot of device monikers for different disk drives. So the system disk is device VDA, and VDA has three partitions on it. VDA1, VDA2, and VDA3. So this is simply the uh, root partition and the EFI boot partition for this particular system. Then I have a disk out here that's never been initialized. It's brand new. It's a 100 gigabyte disk, and its device name is VD. B. So to get started, we're going to launch parted with the sudo command. So we're doing a sudo parted forward slash dev forward slash vdb since that's the name of my disk drive. Before I can create any partitions on this drive, I need to have a partition table. And so the command mklabel GPT is going to create a GUID partition table on the drive. For simplicity here, since I know my drive is 100 gigabytes, I'm going to say make a partition, which will be a primary partition formatted to ext4, and it will be a uh, 100 gigabyte partition with one megabyte blocks. Next, we're going to quit the parted program with the quit command. We can list our partitions with the sudo fdisk space dash l command. And here you can see that it is listing all of the partitions that we have 
on the system, including any on the loop devices. So instead, we can go ahead and say, list the partitions on VDB. And that should be slash dev slash VDB. And there we go. We can see that there is a VDB1 now, and it says that it is 93.1 gigabytes. When we ask for our 100 gigabyte drive, of course, there's a certain amount of overhead. Now, in order to format the partition, we do a sudo mkfs, which means make file system, and the type of file system I want is an ext4, and it's slash dev slash vdb1. Now note that on your system, you might have sdb1, but I have the virtual disk simply because I'm operating inside of a vert manager QEMU virtual machine. So here we make the file system, hopefully by hitting enter. And there we go. When you mount a drive in Linux, what you do is you create a folder and that folder is referred to as a mount point. And most commonly, we create that folder in a mount directory. And so I'm going to do a sudo makedir slash mnt slash my drive. So you could have created the mount point anywhere, but just by convention, this helps you find your mount points a little bit more readily. If we want to simply mount the disk drive, we can do a sudo mount dash t auto means automatically determine the type slash dev slash vdb1 and then slash mnt slash my drive, which is where it will mount the drive. To determine whether or not it has mounted the drive, the next command we want to do is a df command. And you can see here that we have vdb1 that is mounted over on slash mnt slash my drive. So the problem with mounting the drive with an interactive mount command is that when we reboot the system, the drive will no longer be mounted and you'll have to execute a mount command again. To avoid this and have the drive mounted permanently, what we're gonna do is we're going to set the drive up so that it mounts every time the system boots. So first of all, let's dismount the drive by doing a sudo umount for unmount slash dev slash v d B1, and that dismounts the drive. In order to mount a disk partition at boot time, we have to know something called the Universally Unique ID, or UUID for short, and you get that for a particular partition by doing the command sudo blkid forward slash dev forward slash, in my case, the disk drive is named vdb1. And so that will return this very important UUID number that we're going to use in order to mount the disk drive. In order to mount our partition at boot time, we want to do a sudo nano space forward slash etc forward slash fs tab. And fs tab stands for the file systems table. When we go into the editor, we can simply go down and add a new line. And in our case, the new line is going to say UUID equals that long UUID number we got back from the block ID. And the mount point is forward slash MNT forward slash my drive. And it's an EXT4 file system and it should be mounted read write. So at this point, we do a control O, hit enter to save the file and a control X to exit the editor. At this point, if we do a DF command to see what is mounted, you can see that VDA2 is mounted and VDA3 is mounted, but you don't see a VDB1 mounted in the DF command. So now we're going to reboot the system with the sudo reboot 
now. Now that the system's been rebooted, we can execute a DF command, and you'll notice that device VDB1 is now mounted. It's a 95 gigabyte disk after the overhead, and it is mounted in forward slash MNT forward slash my drive. So our addition to the file systems table worked to automatically mount the drive at boot time. So in order to access the new drive, I could simply CD over into slash MNT slash my drive, and I could do an LS, and you would see that lost and found is over there, and that's an indication that we're looking at the top level of the new disk. Now we could turn around and do a touch command for test, and we're going to get an error, and it's saying permission denied. The reason for that is because we don't own this top level folder. The presumption is that you will create user folders inside of this or the other alternative that we have is we can go ahead and change the ownership of the mount point to be the user if you want the user to have the entire disk access. My logged in username is Scott, so I'm going to do a pseudo chown of group Scott and user Scott to forward slash MNT forward slash my drive and I'll provide my pseudo password and once I do that then I have access to the drive without pseudo. So in this particular case if I do a touch test now it will work and if I do an LS you can see that the test file is located here indicating that Scott now has access. For convenience sake, I'm going to CD back to my home folder. And here, if we look at my home folder, you can see that I have the usual directories like desktop, documents, downloads, music, pictures, and so on. And the reason for that is because I have a machine with the desktop. But if we want to make it really convenient to access our new drive, then we can create something called a symbolic link with the command ln dash s for symbolic link forward slash mnt forward slash my drive. Now if we do an ls you can see that I have my drive here and if I simply cd into my drive from my home folder I'm inside of the location. If I do an ls there are my files. I can certainly go back and do things like remove the test file that we just created and I can make a directory called my dir and do an ls and there we are we have access to everything and even though the drive is mounted over in slash mnt slash my drive since we have a symbolic link we're able to access the drive more easily if we cd back to my home directory here and we do an ls dash al you'll see that the symbolic link is just a file and it simply says my drive points over to forward slash mnt forward slash my drive. If we want to remove the symbolic link, we can just say rm my drive and it will remove it as though it is any other file. If we do another ls dash al, you'll see our symbolic link is gone. In summary, in this tutorial, we learned how to configure and mount a disk drive in Linux via the command line. You can use the gparted GUI to accomplish the same thing, but I always think that it's important to learn the details behind the command line because it's a really good process to learning exactly what you're doing. So it's helpful to understand the individual steps and also be able to use that CLI when you have no GUI interface. And a good example of that might be if you've loaded a server variant that normally does not come with a GUI. So this is a very basic tutorial because it's possible to create many types of partitions and format them to many different file systems to support different operating systems. Linux does not restrict the partition format choices like Windows, 
And so you have a lot of control and also a lot of different commands that you can use with parted and G parted. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.